So far, Chris Barnes has won 19 PBA titles, which includes three majors, the US Open, the World Championship and the Tournament of Champions. This means that Barnes is only one of nine players to complete the PBA Triple Crown. Barnes joined the tour in 1997, but it took him eight years to win his first major. So in this video, we're going to look back and see just how Barnes managed to capture his first major title. It was 2005 and the famous US Open was once again taking place. The US Open is perhaps the biggest challenge PBA bowlers face with a grueling all pattern to contend with. Barnes entered the TV finals as the number one seed. There were three other players all trying to reach the title match and face off against Barnes. Now, before we get on to Barnes and the title match, let's take a look at the rest of the live telecast as there were some fantastic matches. This PBA telecast also took place about a week after the sad passing of PBA legend Dick Webber. So many of the players and announcers were paying tribute to Dick Webber throughout the show. First up in match one, we had PBA legend Walter Ray Williams Jr. facing off against Mika Koivuniemi. Both players had won the US Open before and Mika always seemed to save his best performances for the majors. Walter was looking for title 41, which at the time would tie Earl Anthony's record. But I would say that Walter still would have been favourite to win this match. Both players started with a strike, but let's just look at the shot that Walter is playing. He's quite far left and I was surprised he was trying to play this shot and not play a lot straighter. But obviously that shot wasn't in play as all of the players were playing this type of shot with quite a bit of angle. Walter went light on his first couple of shots but made a good adjustment going flush on the next shot in the third frame. Following shot, however, went light and left a weak 10. You can see Walter seemed to think this was a good shot, but it was definitely a little bit right of target and the ball deflected off the pins quite a lot too. Mika is looking fairly comfortable so far, but just to demonstrate how difficult this all pattern is, you can see from this shot that there is no hold room whatsoever and you cannot miss your target inside. Now we're in the second half of the match and after a decent start from both players, things are starting to get a lot tougher for them both. Mika was just a little wide with this shot and it didn't make it back to the pocket. You can see that on the left lane he was way inside and went through the nose. Just another example that shows how accurate you have to be on this pattern. Walter still couldn't string any strikes together. He made a pretty good shot but it just hooked up and went high leaving the four pin. The next shot on the left lane had a very similar reaction and he went high leaving the 4-9 this time. This shot was definitely inside his mark but overall his ball reaction didn't look that great. He's getting a lot of over under but also when the ball hits the pocket it's hitting very flat which is why he was leaving a number of single pins. Mika now has an 18 pin lead going into the 8th and had a very harsh break here leaving the 7 pin off a good shot. He left another 7 pin but this time he went light. Now Walter needed to start striking to give himself a chance but left a flat 10 on the right lane and then went straight through the nose uh, leaving the Greek church and this handed Mika the win. Now on to match 2 where Mika faced lefty Patrick Allen and here's a very interesting stat. Mika was 3-0 against Allen on TV but also 11-0 against left-handers on television. So based on that statistic alone you'd probably say that Mika had the advantage. Mika's first shot and he left a flat 10 which he converted. Now let's take a look at the shot that Allen is playing. For a left hander he's quite far right so you can see that these lanes are forcing the players to create a fair bit of angle and he's basically playing a similar shot to Mika and Walter but just on the left hand side. His first shot is a quite a light hit but he carries all 10. Likewise on the left lane he goes light but can't quite trip out the 10 pin. Mika's next two shots now and he goes high on the right lane and then light on the left. Speed is playing a big part for Mika and you can see when he gets just a little too quick, sometimes the ball just doesn't quite come back. Then when he gets a little soft, it's going slightly high. Patrick Allen struck with another light hit, but then on his next shot, he went way wide and he made a comment that somebody had flashed a camera while he was on his approach, which seemed to distract him as he was just about to to deliver the shot. Can you have to slap the cameras when I'm bowling? Uh-oh. There's a lot Jesus. of media here. We have press, we have lots of fans. Anybody see a flash? Uh, Patrick's not happy with a distraction. Yeah, and he flinches. 
He couldn't convert the split and had an early open frame. Again, Mika can't really get things going. He goes light and leaves the bucket, which he spared, and then went very high and was lucky not to leave a split. Allen threw his next shot way inside and went through the nose, and then Mika threw a great shot in the sixth, but then got a huge break going Brooklyn for a well-needed double. Now we jump ahead to the ninth frame where Mika has a strike in the ninth and a 12-pin lead. Allen went high leaving the sixth pin, but in the tenth he managed to strike out. This meant that Mika needed a spare and then an 8 count to advance. He left a flat 10 in his first shot which he spared. He then needed 8 pins but it looked like he got very quick on this shot and the ball never came back and he got just 7 pins. This meant we were heading to a 1 ball sudden death roll off. Allen as the highest seed chose to go first on the left lane but went very light and was fortunate to get 9 pins. This meant Mika could win with a strike. However, he had some problems with this left lane and went very high leaving the 4-pin, so the roll-off would continue. Allen went light again leaving the 3-pin, handing another opportunity over to Mika. But Mika's shot was both fast and slightly right and he went very light for an 8 count and this meant that Patrick Allen won the sudden death roll-off and advanced to the championship match. Patrick Allen is your winner. Now, after all that excitement, it's finally time to bring on the number one seed, Chris Barnes. His very first shot is inside, but crosses over for a Brooklyn strike, a pretty great break to start the match. Allen started with a nine spare and then a strike. Chris went high on his second shot and had another good break, leaving just the 10 pin. Now, clearly Barnes was trying to get himself into the match and it's never easy coming in cold and facing an opponent who's already had a good feel for how the lanes are playing. But Barnes spared the 10 and then made a much better shot for a strike in the third frame. Allen on his next shot went straight through the head pin but got this fantastic break but couldn't capitalise as he was actually a bit unfortunate on this next shot leaving the 6-8. Barnes jumped on Allen after this open frame and made a great shot but on the left lane he did the same thing as the first frame and threw it way inside. The ball crossed over and he left a 6 pin. Now onto the 6th and 7th frame where Barnes threw a double to increase his lead to 25 pins. Allen did manage to strike for a double but then went high on the left lane leaving yet another 6 pin. Now onto the 8th frame and just look at this ball from Barnes. He literally stopped at the very last moment there. Perhaps something caught his eye or maybe it just didn't feel right. He reset but didn't make a good shot going inside and leaving the 3-6-10. Now Barnes actually went and chopped this and at this point it looked like Barnes' TV struggles were going to rear their ugly head once again. This was a big problem for Barnes at the time and this open in the 8th frame let Adam back into the match as it was now just a 1 pin match. However he really did bounce back well in the 9th frame with the strike. Back over to Adam in the 9th and look at this break that he got but he still needed to strike out ideally to really put the pressure on Barnes. First shot in the 10th frame for Allen and it's yet another fantastic break after going very high and tripping the 6-8. Barnes must have been feeling pretty sick sitting in his chair and seeing those back-to-back -back breaks. Allen made a much better shot but left the 7 pin. This left Barnes needing one strike and a 9 spare to win his first major. And all credit to Barnes here because he put that open frame and all of his previous struggles out of his mind and got the first strike in the 10th. But the job was not quite done, he still needed a 9 spare and this next shot was quite a, a way inside and he was perhaps a little bit fortunate to leave a 9 and he left the 4 pin. Now he had to make this in order to win, so let's watch what happened. Monkey is off Chris Barnes back so that was it after an eight-year wait and many close calls Chris Barnes won his first major title at the 2005 US Open the lanes were certainly not easy and although there was a scary moment for Barnes when he chopped the 3-6-10 in the eighth he managed to do what he needed to do to capture the win it was a great performance from Barnes given all of the pressure and his previous TV struggles and overall, it was an exciting and enjoyable telecast. 
So that brings us to an end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed my breakdown of Chris Barnes's first major win. And please do let me know in the comment section below if there are any classic uh, PBA shows that you'd like me to discuss and break down similar to what I did in this video. So yeah, please do let me know in the comment section below. And as always, thank you very much for watching. And if you haven't subscribed already, I would really appreciate it if you could subscribe to the channel. Thank you, Bolding fans, and see you all next time.